sexual relationships at the workplace. This is the topic for today. Nobody wants to talk about it, so I have to talk about it because it's everywhere. Everywhere I have ever worked, I have witnessed, and I'm the person who never looks at it. I'm always the person who is the lost to know because I'm, I just don't care. However, what I'm interested more about or care about is the consequences of those sexual relationships and what follows that sexual relationship, but the behavior of the, the people. So that is more interesting because that has consequences on not only the two person who is involved, but more many times on the workforce. And that's my area. <laughs> what do we do with the workforce? Hi, I'm Sylvia, an organizational psychologist, and I'm working with companies to create better employee experiences, all the way from attracting talent to saying goodbye to them. And relationships are a big part of employees' experiences. And unfortunately, we never talk about sexual relationships unless it becomes a harassment case or unless it becomes, you know, a compromise situation where now we have a conflict of interest and now it's full on investigation. So I prepared a few points for you guys from, from the consequence point of view, from HR's point of view, and some examples. And I, ne I never tell anyone what to do or what not to do. I always like to say, you do whatever you want to do, but then you be prepared with the, uh, to deal with the consequences. And this is what I would like to talk about more um, than saying, don't do it. You know, some people said on TikTok, basically don't shit where you eat. <laughs> I don't disagree, but hey, human beings, right? We are very, very complicated and we spend awful lot of time at work. So where are we going to meet people if it's not at work? And let, I will talk to, uh, we're gonna close this video with truly re true relationships that, you know, form at the workplace um, that becomes marriages, long-term partnership, real love stories. And I love those kind of stories. However, there is a process and not all of these become, you know, real relationships. And even if they become, what do we need to do? What is it that we need to pay attention to? Now let's look at different levels of relationship or uh, uh, positions and the relationships between those different positions. So for example, when the employees at the same level, whether it is line level or director or senior leadership level, having um, a relationship at the, at the employee level, maybe, you know, it's okay. However, I had a case where the waitress and the chef, the probably it was CDP, chef the party, or maybe a lower one, I can't remember, maybe a Kobe chef, I can't remember. So they were in a relationship. And all of a sudden, the meat started to disappear from the fridge. Why? Because she had this information and this access, he had this information and that access, and the very expensive steak started to disappear from the main fridge in the kitchen. And we found out this is what happened. They took it, they sold it, they made money. And why? Because they had this relationship. Now, um, then if you go to mid-manager levels, now when, when you are entering supervisors, managers and above, now you are in charge of other people. And what we don't like at work is when people who are in charge of other people get into a relationship with anybody really in, in organizations. And I tell you why. When I was teaching or uh, running workshop for my senior leaders, I always said that your judgment, forget about the uh, interest of conflict, right? Because that's one part and I'm going to talk about it. But for, uh, your judgment will be compromised immediately. And don't tell me that you want, because I give you an example of mine. Once I hired an intern, because he looked exactly the same way as my partner at the time must have looked when he was 18. And I looked at him, I'm like, I'll, I'm in love with the guy. <laughs> and I hired him. Thanks God he turned out to be a really good intern, <laughs> because this would have been on me. This would have been on me. So that's how biased we become immediately when relationships, emotions start getting into, you know, the hiring process or whatever we do. 
um, or disciplinary. Now, when you your judgment will be compromised. So when you are looking at people, you 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 are in charge of people. You manage performance. You manage personality. Maybe your partner, your girlfriend, your boyfriend doesn't get along with this stuff, and now all of a sudden, you will take sides. And maybe your boyfriend or girlfriend is not right, but you're going to side by that person. And that person is now, you know, not treated fairly. So don't do it. Or performance management. You are going to overlook poor performance because you are sleeping with that person. I have seen that. I'm like, dude, I have seen senior marketing director and I never really care about who is sleeping with anyone. I, I truly don't. I don't even want to know because I lose, the person loses respect or I lose respect for the person immediately. For me, it's like a no, no, like don't do it at work. Like go outside. There are billions of people outside. Um, or when the senior marketing director is paraded around in the city that she's the best marketing director on this planet when we know that she's sleeping with the CEO of the company. And that's the only reason she's in that job. Never mind that she's being good because she's not. And then she goes out. That's, these are the behaviors I'm really interested about. Like they can sleep together as much as they want. No, I don't care. But then that person is going out on social media and asking and telling a story how hard she worked for her position and whatever she achieved in life, I mean, in terms of her career, and then asking other women to work hard. And I'm like, ah, oh, how I could tell stories about you, but you know, we're not going to go there. But now you are causing harm because first of all, you are falsely presented yourself and you are lying to yourself and to others. And now you may be making other people feel not really great about themselves. So don't do that. And that's why I don't like the behaviors that sometimes come out of these, as, a, as an outcome of these relationships, right? And then you have, let's say, two senior people sleeping together or having relationships. Now you are making decisions over the people or about the people under your care, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of people. And sometimes the decision in the, in the executive boardroom, right? The, the, amongst the senior leadership team is you need to make a, a judgment. You need to take side with someone. And now your judgment, once again, is compromised. And maybe you are not going to vote for the right thing, what, right, what is right for the employees, but what your partner is, is, is saying. And we all get there. Trust me, like separate, keep it separate because it's so easy to get there that, you know what, I go with him or her opinion or version of the truth or, or whatever it is. Um, but you are deciding over people. So you can't be compromised. And that's why we always say that, hey, you can, from HR's perspective, you can have relationships, but declare, which is, I don't, I don't understand this policy because who would declare it? Nobody, we know that HR is gonna come in and look at what, you know, we're gonna move you somewhere. And the reason is right. The reason we're gonna move you is to avoid these situations. But at the same time, maybe one of you will be punished because sometimes the only option is to move the person, one of you, out of the company because you are put in such a situation or positions that there is nowhere else to move. So it's not so much for this video for HR, but for, for you guys that just be aware when you are emotionally, physically involved, your judgment will be compromised. Never mind fraud and conflict of interest and all that kind of things, right? And stealing, I'm not even gonna go there because we have seen examples of that, right? But that's not interesting for me. Steal whatever you wanna steal, I don't care. But, <laughs> but how you treat people, it's, um, and 
the, the, the consequences of your action on others, now it's more interesting to me and that's what I would like to um, uh, avoid, you know? And this is what HR is trying to avoid when we ask you to, don't do it or tell us so we can reduce or eliminate that bias. But it's, it's extremely difficult, it's extremely difficult. Now let's talk about the consequences. So, and um, oh, one more layer or one more scenario. Senior leaders or managers or somebody's above sleeping with the person somebody's below in terms of hierarchy. And I always said that to my HODs, don't do it because abuse of power comes into the picture and that is, that's duty of care. HR will have to step in. And I always supported that because we just don't know if you are using, if you are in the higher position, if you are using your power for that sexual favor relationship or anything, we, just, we will never find out why you two got together. Maybe both of you are in it and want it and, and all that, but we just can't take, we will never know and we can't take that risk. So for example, if the head of housekeeping is sleeping with the housekeeper, these are the things that upset me so much because there, especially when you have different cultures and cultural um, background, you don't know if the person is being forced, coerced or, or something into that and why the person is doing it. Um, and that gets very, very tricky. And that's where we always say, just, just don't do it. Just, just don't do it because when it's, hierarchy uh, differences, abuse of power, the risk of abuse of power is really, really high. And we can't allow to have our employees subjected to that. And we will come in, HR should come in immediately. No, absolutely not. Um, but most of the time, these ones come to light when there is a sexual harassment case and now it's too, way too you know, late because something happened to somebody. And so, so don't do it. Now, the other unintended consequences of this is lack of trust in you. For example, if you are manager, leader, supervisor, because I'm not going to trust you that you're going to make the right decision, let's say, if me and your partner get into a fight because you're going to take sides, right? So I don't trust you. I, I'm not going to respect you, especially if you are at senior leadership role because you should know better. And you lose respect immediately. People will laugh at you and I have seen it, that particular HR director, because she picked a partner, her coordinator, who was not a mature boy, um, and he went around and talked about it to everybody, really. Everybody knew it. And so she lost respect immediately amongst everybody. And the only way for her to claim some level of authority is to start screaming and shouting and bullying the other people or, or the staff, right? Because there's nothing left for her. And, the, and at some point I was like, Lady, why? Like, why are you smarter than that? Why are you putting yourself in such a situation? You want to do it do with somebody, do, do somebody else, you know? Um, so you lose respect, you le lose your authority, people will laugh at you, and we can't take you seriously. And when you come and tell us not to do something that is wrong, we will be like, yeah, right. <laughs> Shall I give you an example of the wrongdoings of yours? Um, so yeah, I have seen senior leaders and you, they could never, they never managed to separate these relationships. Then you have also the risk of you enter the relationship, everything is great, or you know, you're just having fun or whatever for a long time, and then you break up. And who is going to see the consequences of that breakup, your colleagues, your staff. I have seen manager breaking up with the line employees, line employee, and then all of a sudden her 
appraisers went down. I'm like, what? <laughs> so yeah, there is vindictiveness. There is, there is a lot of going on happening. I mean, a lot of things happening when people are involved. I have seen a front office manager getting pregnant by the bellboy. Now that didn't work out very well either. So she had to resign. The bad boy was a hero because he scored, <laughs> right? And she went and the guy obviously didn't want anything to do with her. And then she ended up as a single mom. I'm going back home. I'm like, that worked out really well for you, lovely. But let's talk about when these relationships turn into really good relationships and long lasting relationships and marriages, because we have examples of those too. And this is where it all gets tricky. We just don't know where any of these relationships will end up because they, they all start off or out in the same way, right? Two people like each other. Okay, let's do whatever we want to do. And then it goes either way from there. And then we have couples who have, you know, met at work, um, they married, they got kids, they, they all stay together, they're very much in love and all that. And we support that. We always support that. But even then we say that, you know what, just declare it. And most of the times those are declared because then there is a wedding, there is, you know, and those are the ones who always say, you know what, I'm going out, we are going out, you know, we got engaged or whatever it is. And those come to, to come to the, the attention of the public. So then HR can manage the situation. Uh, normally they don't do much in terms of the, you know, um, being judge, uh, judgmentally compromised and all that because they declared their love. Uh, not only to each other, but for, to us as well. Um, and this is where it's very, very, very difficult. I have seen a workplace where I actually lost, well, I never really follow, I don't care, but I lost track of who is sleeping with who. Because it was just, I mean, it's impossible. And then what line employees, and it was amongst the mid management then crossed over to the senior leadership, down to the line level employees. And it was just like a never ending, like you can't untangle that, La, you know, triangle. It's not even a triangle, it's just like a whatever. Um, and then what you ended up having conversations amongst line employees because they rebelled to their supervisors. Then the line employees lost respect towards each other. So two receptionists would just constantly fight because both slept were sleeping with the same guy. I'm like, Jesus, is like a Eastender storyline, but the bad ones, you know? Um, and you just don't know what to do in such a cases. What do you do? Sit people down, grown as others, and tell them to behave? Like, okay, we do behave. So that's why I always say, look, do what you need to do, what you want to do, but be ready for the, con with the con uh, for the consequences, because when you start creating problem because of that, HR will have to come in. And this is where I support HR 100%. Like, come in and sort this out, because you know what? It creates a toxic environment. It, that reception was a toxic environment, because everybody was just, mm -mm 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 -mm. because of guys and boys and girls and, you know, all of them, I, I blame all of them, you know, they had good fun, but <laughs> they were not mature enough to, you know what, this is what it is, or to separate it. And once again, I never advocated, we always say during training courses, you want to do, but separate, you can't separate it. I'm sorry, we can't. If I love the guy, I'm going to protect him, you know? I hired the intern. <laughs> so for me, that was the red flag and the, and the wake-up call. I'm like, oh my God, Sylvia, you just hired the, an intern because he looks like your partner? Thanks God once again that he was good because, yeah. Anyway, so that's my take on, on having sexual relationships at work. It never really ends well. Is the small minority, the small percentage that really make it work. And the rest of us, 
just make it worse for everybody. Rest of us, I include myself because once I was 25 years old and I was going out with the uh, FMB manager, I was this bar supervisor. I also married the guy, almost married the guy. Um, ended up a three year relationship. I don't think we created the problem at work because it was just the biggest structure. So we were not, well, he was my direct boss, so I can't lie. No, I can't, I can't lie. Um, it was a larger structure, but he was my direct boss. I don't think we created anything that would, negat would have neg negatively impacted every anyone else. But you know what? There were favors because I said, I don't want to work that shift. And there it is. I got the shift I wanted to work. So, yeah. I was 25, so that's my excuse. <laughs> but I had to admit, this, there was, there was an uh, unintended um, consequences of, on, on maybe others, because maybe others didn't want to do that shift, and I, or I wanted to do my shift, and that person, probably the FME manager at the time, said, you know what, I'm going out with her, I'm, go I'm going to please her with the duty roster. And I can't argue with that, you know. I got probably favored. So that's that. That was the last one. I never really got it. I never got in relationship or involved with anybody at work. And I like to keep it this way. I learned from that, although it's not, we didn't do anything bad. Um, and I almost married the stupid guy, but hey, that's another story. So don't sleep with your employees. That's for senior leaders. I would never recommend it. I always say no. And for the rest of you, just be aware of the consequences because it hardly ever ends up very well. So that's for me for today. Enjoy. And I'm going to go and make some dinner. Bye.